Good morning, all. This is Rick. I'm here. Uh, I'm here joining you this morning because Pastor Glenn is on vacation. So such a blessing. He was supposed to be in Hawaii, but um, uh, he wasn't able to go to Hawaii. So I think they're in Texas instead. Um, so I want to bless you guys by um, recapping our service for us. It was a great one today. We had a guest preacher, and um, our worship time was was excellent. So would you join me in some prayer before we start? Dear Lord, we thank you for this morning, for all the things you've done for us this morning already, by putting breath in our lungs and our friends and family that you provided us with. We thank you that you are present with us, both digitally and physically, and all the time, everywhere we are, you're with us. We ask that you would um, soften our hearts to hear the message that is here today, and that you'd lead us into a place of worship this morning. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, and then Pastor Glenn uh, and Cindy also had the blessing of going to New Room, the New Room Conference. Um, I guess it's a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, and so here we have a video from that time. Um, uh, there's going to be a new study starting. Pastor Glenn is going to do a study um, recapping some of the videos from that time at New Room. So um, here is a video from that time. Revival is a growing thing. Awakening is a forest of first fruits, a field of holy ground, a culture of communion. The sowers were told that the tiniest seeds become the tallest trees. What we sow today will become the shade of tomorrow, the sowers were told. But the door was open and the harvest was plentiful. The church as we knew it was choking on thistles, revival is a growing thing. Weakness sown today becomes the dependence of tomorrow. Hearts postured away from pride, too preoccupied with presence. Honesty sown today becomes the wellness of tomorrow. They came empty and were filled. They came bone dry, then came alive, breathing the breath of God. Drew battle lines like the crease of bended knees. Prayers of today will claim the territory of tomorrow. Perfect love from a perfect God. Perfected in his name, the faith of today will become the sanctification of tomorrow. The sowers were told that God was just getting started, that awakening was a miracle, not a myth. The Father turned a breath into a word and turned that into creation. The Son turned a body to the grave and then into a resurrection. The Spirit turned a people into a church and then into a light for a world drenched in despair and soaked in darkness. The sowers were told. The tiniest seeds become the tallest trees. They've gathered, they've grown, they've banded against going at it alone, they've sown. They've sown for a great awakening. All right, as you can see, starting, um, October 26th, Tuesday, Pastor Glenn and Cindy will be sharing some of the um, some of the talks from that New Room Conference, and they would like to invite you to come join them. I've been to the conference, and it's a great time, so um, I hope you'll join them. Um, okay, Christina uh, was joined by Trevor this morning. We didn't have Cindy um, because she's on vacation with Pastor Glenn at the same time, which is not surprising. <laughs> um, I can only imagine Pastor Glenn trying to go on vacation without Cindy. Um, but so Christina has a, a excellent time of worship for us. I hope you'll enjoy. Oh, this week, like he said, has been a week. I have been insanely busy and I'm glad that we could just get to worship today. So let's pray again. God, we thank you so much for who you are and what you've done for us. We pray that this would be a time of worship just to you, that we wouldn't be distracted by anything else with our lives, what we have on our schedules, God, but that we would be so focused on you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you all would stand and sing with us. Is that 
introduce this song at our worship night this week if you are able to join us online or in person um, so it's going to be new but it's easy to learn so that's good let's sing it together Thank you. 
highest praises. Behold His holy 
you that you are a great God and that we can serve you and that we have the ability to serve you. We thank you that you set it up so that we can glorify you and honor you and have a relationship with you. We thank you for your name and we thank you for all your names. God, you are comforter, you are healer, you're provider, you are great, you are mighty. We thank you for that. Pray that you'd bless this time together as we worship you and hear from our speaker, God, that you would just Speak to us today, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, that was a great time. Um, I, I, I grew up in the church. I grew up in the Methodist church myself come from when I was six years old. and So that song at the end, How Great Thou Art, really speaks to me, and I love it when we can blend it together with, um, with stuff we sing today and, and just bring it all together. So um, you can post in the comments, I'm looking here in the comments, if there are any prayer requests. Um, we had several this morning in the service. Um, we're, of course, praying for the safety, um, safe travels, and, and, uh, and fun time that Pastor Glenn and Cindy are going to have. Uh, we're also praying for Trevor's mom, who's having, uh, who's, uh, I believe has a bacterial infection, has been in the hospital for 24 hours, and has had a really rough time. So we prayed for her. We also prayed for Christina, who is looking for a place to live which is not an easy, easy thing to do these days in Orange County. So um, we pray for her and a number of other prayers. So we invite you to post in the comments there some prayers that we can pray for you throughout the service. And uh, we're always here also in the office. If you just need prayer, if you need um, some support and some guidance, please feel free to give a call here to the office uh, or to send us a message here on Facebook. Um, okay, so we're going we're gonna, to um, pray together in the way that the Father taught us to pray which is uh, the Lord's Prayer. So I will lead us in that. Would you pray with me? Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And then as we normally do, we we have a, uh, um, a creed that we we say here in the church, a uh, historic creed, and um, let's do that together. I love those creeds because they really succinctly put together everything that we have, um, that we believe. Um, there are a number of ways that you can make an offering to the fount. Uh, we have a number of ministries here that um, are always, of course, in need of, being, of your support. Um, in addition to live a life um, submitted to God, a part of that is um, offering back what he's given us. And so if you are, um, uh, if you're feeling led by the Lord to do that, there's a number of ways you can do that. Um, you can mail a check here to the church. The address is here on Facebook. You can click the About section. Um, or you can also give online, like many of you who are just online probably would do that, uh, by going to our website, which is thefountain.church. You can also pull out your phone, and you can scan that little code right down below with your phone, and it'll take you to a link. And that's an easy way to do it, too. So um, we thank you so much for all of the blessings that you've given us, and you've enabled us to continue on in our mission and um, we pray that you continue to do that and that we would be able to bless you um, through that. Um, and now we have an offertory. The, the Fount Choir performed an offertory this morning and it was wonderful. It was a small group, a quartet. And so let's enjoy that together. I got other people to do it for me. Um, I found that when I prayed about the sermon information that I was given that my heart was drawn to this text. Um, familiar text, some of you may know it, some of you may not. Um, and I invite you, ponder on the words that you hear. Um, for those of you that do know it, you'll recognize just the name, for the beauty of the earth um, with the Fount Choir. So, thank you.
so great to have um, such a great choir director in Trevor. Um, <clears throat> after our uh, offering, then we sing the doxology as a way to give thanks. God, we thank you for the things that you give to us. Um, we thank you for the provision of our church here and for all the ways that we are able to support people in our community. We pray for the blessing, and we thank you for the blessing that you've given to all of the people that attend here, and, um, for their, and we thank you for their generosity. Amen. And now, time for the children's song. Nope. Try again. <laughs> I am not fancy and I don't play guitar or ukulele, so we're just going to sing. But this song has motions already. Everybody should do it all together. So if you guys, if you're able, if you can stand up, everybody, stand if you're able. We're all going to do the motions together, just so we're all together. Okay, so we're going to sing it through once and then we'll sing it again and then we'll sing it again faster okay okay so here here it goes okay here are the motions ready king of kings and lord of lords glory hallelujah king of kings and lord of lords glory hallelujah jesus prince of peace glory hallelujah jesus prince of peace glory hallelujah okay has everyone got it let's sing it again ready a little faster king of kings and lord of lords glory hallelujah king of kings and lord of lords glory hallelujah jesus prince of peace glory hallelujah Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, hallelujah. And now we're going to do it faster. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, hallelujah. Woohoo! Thank you. <laughs> Recruiting like 90% of you in the choir after that. You guys can sing. All right. If you would join me in singing our hymn of the start of the service, well, middle service, middle hymn, hymn number 257, We Meet You, O Christ.
All right, and then we're blessed to have my, my buddy Mike Parsons um, come and read a scripture for us. Hello again. Uh, I'm going to read Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now I'll read Psalm chapter 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all the sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. All right. And then we were blessed to be joined by Ted Smith, who is our lay leader. This is Laity Sunday, which means that um, the, the clergy are not involved. Clergy, as, a, as opposed to laity, is clergy is somebody who's ordained in the church, and a laity is somebody who's a member of the church. So although Ted is on his way, he, on his way to becoming ordained, um, as a, he is our, currently our lay leader. So let's hear from uh, Ted Smith. Okay, so just so you know a little bit of who I am. You all know I'm married to Nina, which is why you all tolerate me, okay? You know I'm married and have two daughters. You know I'm a lawyer. You know that I'm the assistant city prosecutor for the city of Pasadena. You know that I'm attending seminary at Wesley Biblical Seminary, which is in Mississippi. You also know that I'm a member of the Wesleyan Covenant Association's Global Council, that I got elected to that. You know me. But the reason for this sermon today is for a guy you don't know. In fact, for two people you don't know. One's named Michael Moody, and the other is Ronald Garlington. Now, I'm gonna go back to Mr. Moody. Mr. Moody is a homeless man, he's 58 years of age. He hangs around the city of Pasadena. And on Monday, this last Monday, he comes up to me as he was going to court and he says, Mr. Smith, I need some help. Actually, he says, Mr. DA, I need some help. Somehow, my, some of my brethren can't distinguish the fact that I'm a city prosecutor as opposed to being a district attorney, which I used to be. But you get the drift. So he asked for some help. He is a addict and he has mental problems. Now whether he was mentally ill before he was an addict or an addict before he became mentally ill, I don't think anybody but God would know. So I said to Mr. Moody, I will help you, but I've got to go to court. You come with me. This was at 8.30 a.m. At 9 a.m., I called for someone to come and help, and they have what they call this 
hope team and don't ask me what those acronyms stand for anymore but the idea was that somebody was going to come and help mr moody find some residential treatment and get off the streets he had to wait till 12 p.m. for that person to come as well as for me to get out of court so at 12 p.m. A nice lady by the name of Erin Butler showed up from Union Station. Union Station is a homeless project that's run out of downtown Los Angeles that helps in the area to get people who are homeless out of being homeless and into some kind of transitionary housing or into an alcohol or drug program or to whatever they need. At 1245, Aaron Butler was able to find Mr. Moody a place at a place called Charter House. At about 1.10, we were able to find a police officer from the Pasadena Police Department that was going to deliver Mr. Moody to Charter House. Now, the funny thing is, we can't go inside Charter House. Mr. Moody, all by himself, has to go into Charter House. And he has to tell them, I need help. Mr. Moody was told, yeah, you gotta tell him yourself. Also gotta tell him you need your medication, both mentally and for any other conditions that you have. At 2.30 p.m., Mr. Moody was turned away from Charter House by one Alicia Rivera. Ms. Rivera went on to call Ms. Erin Butler and curse her out for doing so, for sending him. Now, the reason I'm giving you this statement is Mr. Moody was carrying a Bible that he does not read. And one of my jobs, or one of my missions, I should say, privately as it's kept now, it's not going to be, is I walk around a little bit after work, and I try to help homeless individuals not become homeless anymore. And I particularly look for African-American or black males because there's so many of them. Mr. Moody was one of my projects, as it were. So Mr. Moody doesn't read the Bible, but I turned them to that same state passage. And I told them, look, even if you don't believe Look where this is. It's in the first chapter. It's not hidden somewhere in the middle of the book. It's not hidden somewhere in the end of the book. In the very first chapter. Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Genesis 1, 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. I tell Mr. Moody, you're created in the image of God. Now think about that. So I have this class in moral thought. It's taught by a professor by the name of Stephen Blakemore. Stephen Blakemore got his M MDiv, because we know we like education. Got his MDiv from Asbury Theological, and he got his PhD from the University of Tennessee. And he taught me that there's only two religions that have that concept, that doctrine, that you are made in the likeness and the image of God. It's only Judaism and Christianity. Islam has no such thing, and that's another story. Just like that idea about we had that male and female, that's another story. But the concept that God reached out to humanity and humanity to God, that you have just a little bit of the word to know, is only in our religion and Judaism. That's it. 
That's right. He says that man and woman is created in the image of God implies that God has ownership of our lives. And we are to live reflecting God's will by our very nature of pursuing what is good and not bad. St. Catherine of Siena, who was born in 1347, so it was a while ago, died in 1380, who was a doctor of the church, which means in the Catholic church, she's one of the 36 special readings other than the word of God in the Bible that should be considered. She says, in, one, in a book called Her Dialogue, that looking in the mirror is like looking at the image of God. And God gives us a soul of great dignity that we should be thankful for God to, for. Now what does that mean? The concept that we are tied to humanity, humanity and God are tied together, and we are humanity, and that we have this soul that has this special dignity, that we are made in the image of God. When I spoke to Mr. Moody about that, I said, what do you think God, if you are made in the image of God, do you think God would make you an addict? Do you think God would want you living in the street? And ultimately, Mr. Moody agreed. Now, I'm going to give you a little point here. And the reason I said this thing about my brother, Ronald Garlington, is because... Both of us were born from an alcoholic father. Different mothers, but born from an alcoholic father. An abuser, not only of alcohol, but an abuser of his, of his wives, at the very least, as well. My brother was able, with his mother, to find a man by the name of Frank Garlington, that would raise him. My mother was able to find a man by the name of Gordon Specks Powell who would raise me. Ronald Garlington grew up a devout Catholic. I grew up a devout Anglican. Okay? My father was Catholic, got converted by, his, by my mom. And just coincidentally, I got converted to Methodism by, by my wife as well. So, following in dad's footsteps. But the point is, somewhere along the line, Michael Moody, Ted Smith, who's 64, and my brother, who's 54, followed different paths, different understanding of who you are. Are. Brother is a principal of a school in Atlanta. I'm a lawyer. We both came from alcoholic fathers as well. What I'm trying to tell you here is what Alicia Rivera did is not understanding the dignity of what's in you and what you can be at any time once you know. Forget about being a true Christian. Forget about this. This is the Old Testament. I want you to think about this. Think about it. If everybody just believed that they were made in the image of God, think what that would mean. That your soul has a special dignity. That every time you looked at in the mirror, You weren't balding, you weren't too dark, you weren't too light, you didn't have enough hair, you didn't have green eyes or blue eyes, you didn't have blonde hair, you weren't too tall, you weren't too short, 
God made you. When you look at yourself, you're God. You are not ugly. You're not too dark. You're not worried about the color of your eyes, the color of your hair, the color of your skin. Think about that. The basic tenet of our religion, the first step in this whole process, you're made in the image of God. Look what happens in our everyday lives. I went to Kaiser the other day to pick up some medication because I had a crazy abscess tooth and I had to get some, I had to get some antibiotics. I walk into Kaiser Cadillac and there I am. And they're more afraid of COVID than I am. They got you lined up, tossed around, picked on, everything else, any way they can think about making sure you can't get into the building. But when I went to the pharmacy, the pharmacy has a line and it's outside of the building and they only let so many people in. And where's the line? Sitting in the middle of the sun outside, you know, six feet apart. There we are all standing outside. You think that's reflective of the human dignity of who you are while you're trying to get some kind of medical help? And I'm not talking bad about Kaiser in particular, but think about this. Think about your daily activities. Do you believe that sometimes you are treated as if you are made in the image of God? I'm using Kaiser as an as a, as a example. But how many times have you been on the phone and you pick up and you call somebody or you call some agency, you call your bank and they say, due to the high call volume, you have to wait four hours, three hours, two hours. But your call is very important to us. You laugh, but it's true. Think about what happened at Ole Miss in Tennessee yesterday in the football game, throwing golf balls because they were upset at how the game ended. A game, a football game, a game. Not how their mother was treated, not how their father was treated, not how they were treated, a game. We've lost something in our ability, even in the most basic tenet of seeing the human dignity in other people and seeing it in ourselves because guess what? If you're throwing the golf ball, you don't see it in yourself either. Because think about it. If you were seeing some value in your own life, why would you do something like that? Now I must add that I've been a prosecutor for 30 years and I have prosecuted people for their criminal activities. And many of them were just lost. They didn't understand the value of their life. They decided to take something as opposed to earning it. Now, I must admit there were some people who were just downright evil, okay? They decided that this was the course in life that they were gonna choose. But beyond that, many of them were just lost. controlled by other things. But think about this, look at Ole Miss. Look at how we treat Dave Chappelle or John Gruden for that matter. Do you think if we saw the value in human activity, if we saw the value in privacy or dignity of a human being to have that privacy, we, wouldn't, we would consider maybe John Gruden in a different light? and consider Dave Chappelle in a different light as well? How about Thomas Jefferson or Andrew Jackson, for that matter, and their statues? Do we consider that? We've lost something. We've lost something. 
And I'm not saying today you need to go out and tell everybody that they've got to be a Christian. The first chapter of the book. And while I was in class, I remember our professor asked me, he says, you have two passages where you say the same thing. And he goes, did you ever think about why that is? I never forget, I raised my hand on my Zoom class and said, yeah, because man's stupid. <laughs> you got to say it twice. <laughs> got to say it again. And so we do. We say it not only in, in Psalm 8, we also say it in uh, various other places too. You can look at, uh, let's see, what is it? It is Psalm 80 as well. It's there as well. And in other places about the value of human dignity. Lastly, if this doctrine was practiced, if we practiced this, do you think we would have this issue between the United Methodist Church and the formation of the Global Methodist Church? Think about this. In all our humanity, the reason other people don't see us like sometimes we see ourselves in the mirror is because in our actions, even with ourselves, we don't reflect that we are made in the image of God. Imagine if the Council of Bishops of the United Methodist Church, heck, if our bishop, Grant Tagia, saw the value of our human dignity and the right for us to practice our faith accordingly, what would he say? He says no now because he does not see that value. They say no now because they don't see that value. I want you to turn to the right and to the left of you and look at each other. You see the value of the individual worth and faith and the fact that the people you sit next to are made in the image of God because you are here. Right here in church, you know the other person. You know me. You know the pastor. You know the pastor's wife. But how do you do that when you go to the cashier this, this afternoon? When you go buy something, do you reflect to them the fact of their dignity and their worth? Do you see God in them? We are losing because of our inability to reflect the basic tenet of our faith, the respect and human dignity that when you look at somebody else, you see a soul that has some special value, no matter where they are, what they're wearing, the color of their skin, the color of their hair, how tall or how short they are. I want you today to think on that. I want you, when you go leave from here and you go out this week, to reflect on how you treat others. Do you show them that you are a Christian? The reason Mr. Moody came up to me is because I've spoken to him several times and I'd never ever judged Mr. Moody. I saw the value of a lost soul and I wanted to help him and I wanted to help him when he wanted to be helped. And he came. And thankfully, when Mr. Moody was turned away, Aaron Butler and Officer Jones, the one who took him, also saw the value of Mr. Moody. And they wound up picking him up from Charterhouse before he walked out the door, never to be seen again. And we found another place for him because we saw the value in him. It took us all day, but we didn't give up. And I don't want you to give up. I understand, Mr. Moody is just one soul 
It's all day. We didn't find another place till 6 p.m. at night. It was all day. One guy, all day. What's the value of Mr. Moody's soul? Think on that. I think it's everything. There may be a million other people, but I got one. And I want you to go out there, and I want you to get one. Just one. You have to understand that when you see the destruction of our system and our church and everything else, it's because of one simple tenet of our faith. The failure to see the value of the other person. Amen? Thank you. All right, what a timely message from, uh, <clears throat> from Ted Smith. It was great to have him with us this morning. Uh, next week, we have a, a new, another guest preacher, which is going to um, just be great. Um, and let's end with our closing hymn. Our closing hymn today is number 77, How Great Thou Art. So if you could please stand, and we'll sing that together.
Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Um, let me offer us a prayer before we go. Dear Lord, as you go out today, um, after watching this video and enjoying this worship and hearing that message, we pray that we would be changed. We pray that we would do what uh, Ted has said and that we would go and see the image of God in other people and that how they are created in your image. And we would treat them with, uh, with that respect and dignity as such. We ask that you'd forgive us for the ways that we have not done that in the past with people that we disagree with or, or even people that we think are, are just flat wrong or um, are doing, doing wrong things. We pray that you would help us to see it in them and that we would act accordingly. And we thank you for the worship that was, uh, was provided to us today. Um, pray that you give us opportunity to give you glory today as we go out. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning, and thank you for your patience with my technical <laughs> difficulties. Uh, every time Pastor Glenn leaves, it's like a, it's like I have to re relearn all this stuff over again. <laughs> so, um, bless you. God bless you and keep you, and we'll see you next week.